Hello there and welcome to Chem Crackers. I am Imran Miller, your Chem Cracker. Now today we are looking at buffer solutions and pH changes during titrations. And I'm going to be reviewing these two topics by simply doing some questions. It's all of them multiple choice. So let's begin. Question 1 says, a solution that contains a weak base and its conjugate base in roughly equal concentrations is uh, neutral is a tempting option for people if you don't know what you're doing. The conjugate base is basically the salt of the acid. So this question is really asking you what is a mixture of a weak acid and its salt called? And the answer for that is a buffer solution. So your answer there is D. Question 2. Consider a solution containing 0.5 moles of Kf and 0.5 moles of HF in 1 liter of water. Now, HF is a weak acid. If 0.1 mole of sodium hydroxide is added to this buffer solution, the pH of the solution will get slightly dash, and then the pH does not change more drastically because the NaOH reacts with dash present in the buffer solution. So, it's a alkali, a strong alkali that you're adding, so the pH is going to increase, okay? So we're looking for higher, and then the pH does not change more just because the NaOH reacting with what? Is it reacting with the salt or the acid? I would say the acid, and so your answer there is B as in boy. Question 3. What reaction occurs as a hydrochloric acid solution is added to a solution containing a mixture of acetic acid and sodium acetate? Now this mixture here is a buffer solution. So this has to do with you knowing how a buffer works, right? A buffer works because it has a reserve of acid and also a reserve of its conjugate base. So if you add an acid, then the acid will react with the conjugate base to produce the largely unionized weak acid. Now, so where is that occurring? So this, the acetate or ethanoate ion is CH3COO minus, okay? And then the H plus ions from the HCl would combine with that. So where is that? That is option C. There you have the acetate ion combined with H plus to form largely unionized acetic acid. And so your pH doesn't change much. Question four. When the following chemicals are mixed, each in one liter of water, which would give the most basic pH at the end? All right, so you have to look carefully. So this is dealing with acid-base equilibria, as well as um, in terms of strong acids, strong bases, um, titration. It's mixing a bit of buffer solution as well. So you have to know all of acid-base equilibria. So it says one mole of sodium hydroxide, that's a strong alkali, with one mole of HF, that's a weak acid. All right, so but they're going to neutralize each other exactly. All right, so you're going to form a salt, sodium fluoride, okay, which would be slightly alkaline. Um, one molar potassium hydroxide and two molar HCl. You have an excess of HCl, so they form a mixture of KCl and HCl. Now that's not a buffer solution, but you have one mole, ex one mole of excess HCl, which means that's going to be acidic. 0.5 mole HCl and 1 mole NH3, which means that these are one to one, right? Both monobasic, and so uh, you'll have excess 0.5 mole, uh, 0.5 mole excess ammonia. Okay, that will be basic for sure. One mole of KOH and 0.5 mole of HCl. You have excess KOH, so you have an excess of 0.5 mole of KOH here, and you have an excess of 0.5 mole NH3 here. So both of these last two solutions, C and D, will be basic, but KOH is a stronger base, it's a strong base, whereas NH3 is a weak base, so this one is likely to be more basic, so your answer is D. Question 5. Which combination of solutions is the best choice for making a basic buffer solution? Alright, so buffer solution, remember, is typically uh, either a combination of a weak acid and its salt or a weak base and its salt all right so if you if you want a basic buffer you'll be looking for a weak base with a mixture with its salt okay so um, HCl and NaOH 
exactly cancelling out each other same amount not likely to to form a buffer there any uh, HCl strong acid and sodium chloride definitely out so A and B are out C equal volumes of two molar ammonia and one molar HCl let's look at that more carefully um, D says equal volumes of two molar ammonium chloride and one molar hydrochloric acid this is out yeah because this this is a strong acid all right um, so this is this is definitely out C is the correct answer here's what's gonna happen one mole of the one all of the hydrochloric acid because it's one molar is gonna react with half of the ammonia right and form ammonium chloride and that ammonium chloride will be mixed with the excess ammonia because we have two molar ammonia solution all right so only half of the ammonia solution will react with the HCl so you will have a mixture of ammonia and ammonium chloride so your answer is C number six in a titration of monoprotic acids and bases there is a large change in pH at the point where pH equal pKa no the, at that point the pH is going up steadily not in a large change when the volume of acid is equal to the volume of base now what you're looking for here is that the large change in pH occurs in a titration at the equivalence volume or at the equivalence point there's a sudden jump in the pH so what you really want to look out for is what of which one of these is expressing that expressing the equivalence um, point um, equal volumes of acid not might not be the equivalence point because you'd have to know that the concentrations and the proticity of the acid right so you're gonna have the equivalent volume when you have or the equivalent point when you have um, molar equivalent amounts of acid and bases now because they are both monoprotic then what you need is that you need the moles to be the same okay the moles to be the same um, concentrations here is the same but that necessarily moles because the volume might be different so the answer is D the number of moles of acid is equal to the number of moles of base and remember you don't have to have the same number of moles of acid and base to have molar equivalence now understand what molar equivalency means it means that you have the number of moles that exactly neutralize each other so for example one mole of HCl is molar equivalent to one mole of NaOH because they exactly neutralize each other but one mole of H2SO4 is equivalent to two moles of NaOH because these also exactly each other, ne exactly neutralize each other question seven when an acid when an, when when an acetic question seven when an acetic acid solution is titrated with sodium hydroxide the slope of the titration curve versus volume of NaOH added the slope of the titration curve slow increases slowly when sodium hydroxide is first added this change shows that a acetic acid is being converted to sodium acetate let's stick up in there the reaction is very slow no that has nothing to do with the rate the more concentrated solution of NaOH needs to be present to initiate the reaction no nothing is happening during the titration certainly no the answer is a no a is not so obvious but here's what's happening acetic acid is being converted into sodium acetate then what you have is a mixture of sodium acetate all right and acetic acid in the conical flask now that's a buffer solution and that is why the ph is increasing slowly at first because you're in a you have a mixture of a weak acid and its salt being formed which is a buffer solution question eight the following titration curve is most likely to be associated with okay so we have to pick out the nature of the titration here so we want to know what is happening here now if we look at what it starts here this pH looks fairly high but it could be it could be considered low as well but if we look at the pH change at the end point this pH looks like it's changing from somewhere above 7 to about 11 or so but basically you have a inflection point above 7 that tells you that I'm dealing with a weak acid strong base titration all right so the answer for that is B okay 
Number nine, let's look at it. Now, look at this titration curve. What is the nature of the acids and bases reacting? First, I look to see that I'm starting way up. All right, starting way up near the top. So very high pH. All right, so that's likely a strong base. And I'm ending up down the bottom, that's likely, that's going towards a strong acid. And the other thing I looked at is, look at the big change in pH at the equivalence point. This suggests that I'm dealing with a strong base, right, versus strong acid titration. The acid being the titrant, because as you add the titrant, the pH is going down. So, we're looking for a strong base with a strong acid titrant. So, we're adding acid. So, your answer is C. Note that A is also strong base, strong acid but it has a strong base as the titrant, in which case the pH would be going up as you add the titrant. Here the pH is coming down. Answer is C. Number 10, what is indicated by the shape of the titration curve? Now, you, you have more than one point of inflection. Um, when you have diprotic um, acids or bases that you're dealing with, all right? So, you have to think about what is happening here overall. The titrant you're adding is causing the pH to go down. So it means that we're adding the acid. Okay? So we're adding the acid. Now we're probably adding a strong acid if you look at base of what is going on there. Now remember we, we measure the pH of whatever is in the conical flask. So we're adding the titrant that's causing the pH to go down. That means the titrant in the burette is the acid. So in the conical flask will be the base. Okay, so the base is in the conical flask. So what it means is that what it means is that my base has two um, two points of inflection here, which means that it is diprotic. So the answer is B. A diprotic base is being titrated with a strong acid. Number 11 says, calculate the pH of a solution that's 0.65 molar sodium nitrate and 0.4 molar, um, 0.4 molar HNO2. So what you have to recognize is that it's a salt and this is a weak acid. So we're dealing with a buffer solution. So this question is asking you to calculate the pH of a buffer solution. So the pH of a buffer solution can be found using this equation pH is equal to pKa plus log uh, the concentration of salt over concentration of acid called the, this equation is called the Henderson Hasselbalch equation so let's fill in the values that we need to fill in and calculate pH so if we fill in the value for Ka and the concentrations of the salt and acid we get we get 3.4 plus 0.21 which is equal to 3.61. And so our answer is C. Now let's look at question 12. It says, calculate the pH of a solution that has 0.3 molar ammonia present and 0.2 molar ammonium chloride. Now this again is a mixture of a weak base ammonia and its salt ammonium chloride. Okay, so this is a buffer solution. So, now this is, you have to be careful here because it gives you Kb of the ammonia, okay, it's a weak base. So what we have to do is to calculate the pH of a um, basic buffer solution. So we have to be careful here because we have to work out the OH concentration or the POH and then find the pH. So we can write the equation for the dissociation of ammonia. Uh, and that in equal solution, so you form essentially ammonium hydroxide ions and aqueous ammonia. We could form ammonium, we could put ammonium hydroxide here, or we could put ammonia. It's understood to be aqueous ammonia. Okay, so if we make OH the subject, OH concentration the subject, then uh, we get OH concentration equal Kb times the concentration of the ammonia over the concentration of the ammonium ions which is the concentration of the salt now remember in a in a buffer the 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 um, conjugate acid in this case 
or even in acidic buffer the conjugate base is contributed mainly from the salt mainly comes from the salt so if we find we can uh, we can find OH minus and then find um, POH or we can write we can write POH directly from this POH would so POH would be equal to PKB plus log ammonium ion concentration that's the salt concentration over the concentration of the weak base so we have to fit in the values which works out to 4.74 minus 0.18 which is 4.56 now remember this is POH we then have to work out the pH pH would be equal 14 minus POH which is 14 minus 4.56 which your final answer is 9.44 and so our answer is A thank you for watching another chemistry crackers today my name is Imran Miller don't forget to share the video subscribe and turn on notification for more Cape chemistry and A-level chemistry and AP chemistry crackers